No one saw this coming. Not Washington, not Brussels, not even Amsterdam. But here we are. The Netherlands, one of America's closest allies, has made a move that could send shockwaves through the global semiconductor industry and it's not backing down. Just one decision was all it took to disrupt America's tech war, and the fallout is something no one's ready for. The Netherlands justified U.S. pressure with a move that could destabilize global semiconductor supply chains. ASML, the Dutch tech giant that controls 90% of the global lithography market, was expected to comply fully with Washington's semiconductor export bans on China. But according to Reuters, ASML is still shipping deep ultraviolet DUV machines critical for chip production to Chinese companies, despite Washington's insistence on a full ban. This decision undermines the U.S.'s efforts to limit China's semiconductor capabilities and raises a crucial question. Is the Netherlands carving its own path? Or engaging in economic brinkmanship? Former ASML CEO Peter Wen had warned that cutting China off entirely would only speed up Beijing's domestic chip-making capabilities, and he may have been right. China's Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC, recently produced a 7 nanometer chip despite U.S. restrictions, a feat that the Wall Street Journal called a wake-up call for Western tech dominance. If ASML continues exporting to China, is it prolonging its own market dominance or ensuring its own obsolescence? Forget oil, rare earth metals, or AIASML's extreme ultraviolet, EUV machines, are the most valuable technology in the global semiconductor war. Each EUV machine costs over $380 million and is essential for manufacturing the most advanced chips. Without them, China is stuck generations behind the U.S., Taiwan, and South Korea. That's why the Biden administration pressured the Dutch government through the CHIPS Act to block ASML from selling EUV machines to China entirely. But here's where things get complicated. ASML still dominates the market for older, but still critical DUV lithography machines. The U.S. wants those blocked too, but the Netherlands is resisting. Financially, the numbers tell a clear story. China accounted for 46% of ASML sales in 2023, generating over $7 billion. Cutting China off could slash ASML's revenue and hand its monopoly power to China-backed alternatives. If ASML bows to Washington's pressure, it risks undermining its own future. At first glance, the Netherlands' decision to keep selling DUV machines to China might seem like defiance, but there's more to Ida economic survival. Dutch officials aren't just balancing U.S. and Chinese diplomatic pressure, they're protecting ASML's role as a global tech leader. The Dutch government heavily subsidizes ASML, and letting Washington dictate its trade policy could turn the Netherlands into an economic pawn for U.S. interests. But there's also the threat of retaliation. Beijing has already hinted at blacklisting ASML if export restrictions tighten further. According to Nikkei Asia, China is stockpiling ASML machines, ramping up domestic production of alternative lithography technology, and investing $143 billion into its own semiconductor sector. The Dutch government must ask itself, if it caves to U.S. pressure now, will it still have a market in five years? Washington's strategy assumes one thing, that without ASML, China can't build cutting-edge chips, but that assumption is already being tested. According to the Semiconductor Industry Association, China produced 70% more advanced chips in 2023 than the previous year despite heavy sanctions. The Netherlands' refusal to fully comply with Washington's demands could accelerate China's ability to close the technological gap. Intel, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm some of the biggest U.S. chipmakers are watching closely. Restrictions on China haven't stopped demand, they've just shifted supply chains. Bloomberg reports that while the U.S. banned chip sales to Huawei, Chinese companies have found workarounds through subsidiaries and third parties. If ASML continues selling DUV machines, is Washington inadvertently helping China become independent faster? Each time the U.S. tightens semiconductor restrictions, China responds with massive investments in self-sufficiency. Huawei's Mate 60 Pro, featuring an advanced 7 nanometer processor, shocked the industry because it wasn't supposed to be possible under current export bans. Now, China is preparing to scale even further. According to Keen Global, China's state-backed chip fund just injected $45 billion into SMIC and Yangtze Memory Technologies, YMTC. Dutch semiconductor analyst Bert van der Verve notes that the longer ASML continues selling to China, the faster China's domestic industry will evolve. If the Netherlands is keeping ASML's doors open for short-term profits, it might be enabling China to develop the very technology that will eventually replace ASML. The European Union has struggled with trade policy unity, and the Netherlands' latest move has only deepened those divides. 
France and Germany have publicly supported Washington's stance on semiconductor sales to China, but behind closed doors, many European leaders are frustrated. Why? Because U.S. companies like Intel and AMD still get exemptions to do business with Chinese firms. EU policymakers are asking, if America is putting its own economic interests first, why should Europe blindly follow? The Financial Times reports that European chipmakers like STM, Microelectronics, and Infineon are quietly lobbying against full-scale bans. If the Netherlands' resistance gains traction, it could spark a broader European rebellion against U.S. trade policy. And if that happens, the bigger question won't just be about ASM lit, will be about whether the West is breaking apart over economic self-interest. China controls over 77% of global battery production, but its biggest vulnerability remains high-performance semiconductors, essential for EVs. Dutch company ASML holds the exclusive capability to produce EUV lithography machines the key to manufacturing the most advanced automotive chips. The U.S. imposed strict restrictions to prevent China from accessing this technology, but with ASML still shipping DUV machinists, albeit at a reduced volume, Chinese firms like SMIC and YMTC are accelerating domestic alternatives. According to Bloomberg, China's EV sector is now the world's fastest growing, with domestic EV sales expected to exceed 10 million units in 2024, putting pressure on Tesla, Volkswagen, and General Motors. If China closes the chip gap, it could dominate not just battery production, but the entire EV supply chain forcing Western automakers into long-term reliance on Chinese technology. Washington expected full compliance from its allies, but ASML's continued shipments to China, combined with Beijing's aggressive push for self-sufficiency, suggests growing defiance within global trade networks. The U.S. Bureau of Industry and Security estimates that China increased its domestic semiconductor production by 38% in 2023 alone, outpacing predictions. SMIC, once dependent on foreign technology, recently produced a 7 nanometer chip using DUV machines, something U.S. officials deemed impossible under current restrictions. ASML's decision to maintain sales of older generation machines, even under stricter export rules, has emboldened South Korea and Japan, where domestic firms are urging their governments to loosen chip export policies to avoid losing market share to Chinese alternatives. Nikkei Asia reports that South Korea's chip exports to China surged by 41% in early 2024, indicating that a global semiconductor realignment may already be underway. Despite U.S. pressure, China remains ASML's second-largest market, accounting for 46% of total sales in 2023, worth over $7 billion. Cutting China off entirely could create a massive revenue gap that Europe's struggling semiconductor sector can't fill. ING Bank analysts project that if ASML fully complied with Washington's restrictions, its revenue could drop by as much as 20% over the next two years, leading to mass layoffs and investment cuts. The Dutch government, which views ASML as a national asset, has been hesitant to impose a full export ban without compensatory trade agreements. However, if China succeeds in developing its own lithography industry, ASML could lose not just revenue, but its technological dominance. This raises a crucial question. Is ASML buying time with China or risking long-term obsolescence? The semiconductor battle is part of a larger economic standoff between China, the U.S., and the EU. The Financial Times reports that China has now placed export restrictions on gallium and germanium key materials for chip production in retaliation against Western trade policies. Meanwhile, Washington is preparing a $39 billion subsidy expansion under the CHIPS Act to counter China's rising influence, while the EU rushes to implement the European CHIPS Act, worth $47 billion. This tit-for-tat escalation suggests that the ASML dispute isn't just about semiconductors, it's part of a much larger economic realignment. If tensions continue, we could see further restrictions on critical tech components, nationalization of supply chains, and Western firms forced to pick sides in an all-out economic cold war. If ASML continues selling restricted chip technology to China, U.S. trade officials could escalate by targeting European firms with secondary sanctions, similar to those imposed on Huawei suppliers. At the same time, China's state-backed semiconductor fund, the Big Fund 2, has committed $45 billion in new investments to develop its own lithography systems, with early prototypes expected by 2026. If China succeeds, Taiwan's TSMC and South Korea's Samsung both reliant on ASML machines could lose their technological edge. Meanwhile, European semiconductor firms like Infineon and ST Microelectronics are growing wary of over-relying on U.S. policy decisions with executives pushing for trade autonomy and closed-door meetings with EU officials. 
This suggests that what we're witnessing is not just a battle over semiconductor supply, but the fragmentation of the global chip industry into two competing ecosystem zones, led by China, the other by the U.S. and its allies. For decades, Europe played the role of a neutral economic power. But ASML's decision whether strategic or forced could mark the moment that changed. The U.S. expected the Netherlands to fall in line, but resistance from The Hague has shown that European nations may no longer be willing to blindly follow Washington's trade directives. China, meanwhile, is using the ASML dispute to expose cracks within the Western alliance, testing how much economic pressure it can apply before U.S. allies start breaking ranks. If Beijing secures an alternative to ASML within the next decade, it won't just mark a technological shift it will fundamentally alter the balance of global power. The Netherlands may have made a short-term decision based on trade interests, but the long-term consequences could redefine economic alliances for decades. If ASML loses its technological edge to China, this moment could be remembered as the day the West lost its monopoly over the future of computing. And if you think this is the biggest battle in the global semiconductor war, think again because something even bigger is happening right now, and it could change everything. A new player is emerging in this phytone that neither the US nor China expected. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Check out another video now available on your screen.